On December 6th, 1939, Nal Kinnick delivered an acceptance speech to a crowd of 700 in the Downtown Athletic Club in New York. The transcript of the speech is one page in length and took about one minute to deliver. Many more tuned in later that night for the radio broadcast of the event. The award Kinnick received was the Heisman, which had been bestowed upon the best collegiate football player every year since 1935. Named in honor of the late athletics director of the Downtown Athletic Club, John Heisman, the winner is selected by the votes of sports writers across the United States. As Kinnick addressed the crowd following the ceremony, it was evident that it was a very humble reception. Kinnick had written a letter to his mother prior to leaving for New York for the banquet. Kinnick wrote that he had just recently shaken off the, quote, days that beset him after he learned of his selection for the Heisman. This revealed his astonishment that others would care to recognize his achievements. The fact that I am actually receiving this trophy tonight almost overwhelmed. In accordance with the humble reception, the majority of the speech consisted of Kinnick thanking others for their help. I consider my winning this award as indirectly a great tribute to the new coaching staff at the University of Iowa and to my teammates sitting back in Iowa City. Or thanking others for their recognition of his achievements. I want to take this grand opportunity to thank collectively all the sports writers, all the sportscasters, and all those who have seen fit, have seen their way clear, to cast the ballot in my favor for this trophy. In the present day, athletes often allow their popularity to transform into inflated egos. Kinnick was the polar opposite, instead crediting others. However, Kinnick had another agenda for his speech. Near the conclusion of his speech, Kinnick states, I thank God I was warring on the good irons of the Midwest and not on the battlefields of Europe. Notice that he used the term warring to describe his actions on the football field. As Oregon State University professor Michael Oriard writes, quote, Newspaper coverage from this period established football, with its star players and concept of team play, as heroic, even epic or mythic, combat. Unquote. Sports writers tended to portray football as a great battle and describe the players as unfaltering warriors vying for glory and honor. These sports writers who depicted these epic battles were vital to the game as they satisfied the public's demand for more information and analysis during this popularity boom in college football. A testament to this growing popularity of the relatively new game are the packed crowds for which now Kinnick played. Kinnick's popularity and warrior status provided him tremendous authority to be heard by Americans on the matter of war. This matter of war was a delicate subject with Americans in 1939. Still reeling from the effects of the 1929 stock market crash, many Americans were unemployed. War seemed to be a task too great for the current State of the Union. This idea of avoiding European conflict was prevalent in America. Dr. Walter Hickson, a professor at the University of Akron, viewed American involvement in World War II to be one of self-defense. He believes the United States would not have gotten involved if it had not felt as though its own security was in danger. America's involvement in this great conflict was, in the words of Hickson, quote, a specific response to a particular perceived threat, Nazi Germany, unquote. Meaning the prospect of Hitler gaining a great deal of power eventually struck enough fear into the U.S. to warrant sending its own boys to fight. However, in December 1939, Germany had not yet defeated the major European powers, so the U.S. had relatively little reason to worry. The defense of the vineyards of France did not seem worthy of American blood. On December 3, 1939, FDR addressed the nation after the recent news of Germany's invasion of Poland. It is right that I should recall to your minds the consistent and at times successful efforts of your government in these crises, these crises referred primarily to World War I, as it was still fresh in everyone's mind. To throw the full weight of the United States into the cause of peace. It was evident that the objective remained, if possible, to avoid involvement in this European conflict. Kinnick, being a man of the proper age for war, offered a first-hand opinion of one whose life would be jeopardized by conflict. Kinnick also assumes the position of spokesperson for all of the football players in his final statement. His opinion that it is a blessing to be in a nation at peace is exemplified by this closing line in the speech. As he states, I can speak confidently and positively that the players of this country would much more, much rather, struggle and fight to win the Heisman Award than the Croix de Guerre. Thank you. 
The Croix de Guerre is a French medal awarded for an act of bravery on the battlefield, often to a soldier who risks his own life to assist others. Kinnick makes quite evident that he has no desire to be put in a position in which his life would be at risk, and his comments should make evident to the American people and the U.S. government that they have no right to send their boys into a war that is not their own. Niall Kinnick, the humble warrior of the Midwest, made his reluctance to engage in true war evident to the American public via his remarks in this Heisman acceptance speech. Ultimately, Kinnick did answer the call to defend the country in August 1941, only after determining that the war was imminent. As a pilot in the Naval Air Corps, Kinnick perished after his plane crash during a training mission on June 2, 1943. Niall Kinnick, an ambassador of peace during his speech, ultimately sacrificed his life for the defense of his country during the deadliest war in history.